in spring 2020, we realized that each of the originally commissioned VFX projects work for the rest of the year of 2020 has been stopped. Our personal Corona fiasco. So I'm Maria, I'm the co-founder together with my husband Jörg, um, CEO and producer of our company Faber Cordial. Uh, we are quite active in VR and well known for our 360 films like First Step and Second Step. And it's also very important um, to, to mention that we are still and simultan simultaneously a VFX company. We are all together 13 people and there has to be work and money. So we struggled for work last year. But we also thought about an own UVR project, which could be done somewhere in between to use the currently free time from our staff members. So we plan to work at that project and simultaneously we wanted to look for at least one further investor, which we found in the end with Deutsche Te Telekom. So that was the start of Genesis, a project about the evolution of Earth and mankind. And when I look back, the topic and our struggles within that project seem like an analogy to the whole industry. That's why I would like to share some personal and entertainment-based thoughts on the successes and setbacks of the immersive evolution. Commonly known, it all started with a big bang for us about 14 billion years ago. And for VR, probably started in 1935. In a short story of Stanley Weinbaum, a pair of special goggles deliver a lot. A movie, a sound, taste, smell and touch. You immerse into the story and you can talk with the shadows of the characters who even react. VR was born. And like the first stars, galaxies and planets emerged, immersed after the Big Bang, a lot of different approaches to VR have been developed during the next 80 years. It started in the 50s with a machine called Sensorama, you see that above, initiated by Ivan Sutherland, the first virtual reality head-mounted display named the Sword of Damocles. And later in the 90s, um, VPL research was founded. The comment company developed the first commercially available headsets and gloves. So these were just a few of them. However, like in Earth's history, the physicist David Deutsch speaks of the great monotony, nothing much, or let's say dramatic, happened for quite a long time. So Earth's history is an analogy to the mentioned 80 years since the first ideas about VR popped up. A lot happened, but there was no perfect breakthrough. Still, just as the Earth and the Moon started to firm, first ideas also firmed in VR. In the 90s, also Jörg and I, like so many others, stumbled over this fascinating medium. At that time, we approached VR as students of industrial design. We visited the Fraunhofer Institute for Visual Computing. Um, we had fascinating meetings. And as a result, we developed in our studium um, an exoskeleton, a unit to have the full immersion with haptical, with haptical feedback. And so this was just a draft, but we were fascinated by this topic. And after that, for so many years, we didn't think about it any longer. Um, 
but back to the history of Earth. Nothing striking happened for quite a long time. And it's actually only in the last eighth of Earth's history that another Big Bang happened. A complex life occurs and an amazing diversity emerges. And for VR, the Oculus Rift and the development kit of 2000. 14 has been, let's say, the midwife of VR. These dev kits were the starting shot for companies like us, for startups, and also, also the big entertainment industry. So Facebook bought Oculus in March 2014. Many people were quite excited. A lot of money had been invested back then. And we even thought in 2015 to produce a whole feature film in VR. At that time, we submitted for funding and thank God our project hasn't been accepted. We had a brilliant recruitment plan. I guess you still know these former foresights for VR. You can see it in the slide. So according to K0, this was the only VR consulting institute at that time, by 2018, there would be over 170 million global active users of VR. Um, the reality is in 2020, there were at least around 70 million users, users of VR video games, and that's by far the largest VR group. However, great expectations at that time. And like on Earth, evolution continues. The miracle takes its course and the VR business thrived. Disney invests over 60 million in Jaunt and other companies. Habitats like the Samsung Gear Store developed Little Star, venues like The Void grew. Yet, even with miracles, the journey of VR is challenging, paved with obstacles, and it demands a lot of stamina. Many life forms, studios, companies, etc., have not made it. Nevertheless, more and more companies are developing their own VR headsets, Google, HTC, Microsoft, Sony, and yes, the Oculus Go had been released. In 2018, this was thought to be mobile VR for the mass market. And it turned out that it has been an experience in between. After the Quest has been released, with a mobile headset for six stuff. Still, like a secret law of our planet, and VR, bloom is followed by blows. On Earth back then, it was an asteroid which destroyed most of the existing life, but offered a chance for other life forms, the mammals. For XR, it was Corona, which destroyed a lot of thriving business. For sure, not so dramatic, but there were a lot of breakdowns. At the end of 2019 and during the first months of 2020, I had a lot of promising talks and concluded con contracts. They all vanished into thin air. Builded habitats, especially the location-based entertainment, suffered a serious setback. Some closed down like the void or companies had to find new concepts or they needed a lot of staying power. Just as museums, which are an important client for entertainment XR. I've heard at a Congress that there are a lot of British museums which no longer exist. But I have to confirm, not everything goes back to COVID-19. Like you can see, for example, with the close down of Samsung VR and XR in 2020. So it's a fact, VR isn't still there where we would like it to be. So this is the point where I would like to shift the focus to the production of Genesis and our challenges and solutions. 2020 has been a strange year for most of us. 
We worked even harder than before. But on the other hand, we thought a lot about the company, about the strategy, what to change. And simultaneously, we worked at our project Genesis. During the last 20 years, we've created a lot of different settings, space, volcanoes, dinosaurs, landscapes, and so on. So we wanted to use some of the data for our new project. So you see our collage, it growed, and some of our team worked on defined settings for Genesis during the last year. But everything created in our old traditional pipeline. During that time, Jörg and I also talked a lot about the existing and non-existing distribution possibilities for 360 films, since that's what we were doing so far. Working in the typical VFX pipeline means to produce settings, to render these settings, so to calculate the images, and as a final step, doing the finishing during the post-production process. So this traditional process is terrifying when producing 360s stereo 3D content. No direct tests in VR is, uh, are possible, awfully long render times, etc. So during December last year, we decided to change the pipeline to a real-time engine and to work from then on in Unreal. And I'm grateful that Jörg insisted on changing the pipeline immediately, even during all of our projects, so even VFX projects again, which meanwhile had accumulated. It was a creepy time, but also an inspiring one. The first medium of our Genesis setting to be produced should again be a VR film. We are at least familiar with this workflow. So it seemed to be, the, to be a good start for a tight schedule of just another five months. We wanted to submit to Venice. So even so, we made a lot of tests before our decision to change the pipeline. We had several shocks during the production. Tests are not the same than working at a real project. We tried to transfer a lot of our already created data, but due to a completely different workflow, in the end, a lot had to be created once more. And Unreal, so far, isn't adapted for the export of 360 film. A film consists of many, many 360 stereo 3D images, which now had to be rendered in Unreal. Our hope was that th this should be fast, you know, just real time. In the past, we had our traditional pipeline, which means that the calculation of an image is based on the algorithm of ray tracing. So the calculation happens in a pixel accurate manner. This is a very clean method. In a game engine, a 360 image is created like it would be by a 360 camera with different camera lenses in different directions. So in the end, you have many images which have to be stitched. So we had different stitching problems. In our tests, the quality of an image wasn't convincing. We tested different tools and compared the features, the required time for rendering, so no real time at all, and um, the quality of the images. We also wanted to use post effects like lens flare and bloom, which couldn't be used in some of the available, available rendering tools. And in the end, we opted for Ansel. The quality of the images seems pretty good. So we expanded it by programming to 
use it also for a complete sequence, not just one image. However, the whole thing is still not perfect. So, and we had problems to get a rendered sequence with moving objects without uh, a kind of a chitter. So we had to find out the reason for this chitter, which always was in this moving sequence and how to turn it off. So it happened to be a very special one. It's the motion vector with in a real-time engine. And we were very happy to find it out. So these are just a few aspects of our technical back and forth. And on the other hand, there is this great aspect of working more creative and intuitive in a real-time engine. Most of the scenes have now been created within the setting, not in front of a screen. Settings have, for example, to be much closer in VR to be to have this perfect impact you need than you would have when watching it on flat screen. So it's good to directly control this within the setting. But apart from the story and the images, we again wanted to combine the film as a perfect single whole with text, speaker, and music. And we knew in the end, we have to distribute the film. So it's great, for example, to have a well-known speaker. But we are in Germany, not in the US. Difficult for the international market. So maybe speaker of Great Britain. Uh, I love the podcast of Stephen Fry, a wonderful author and speaker. So at least he's well known in Britain. However, we have received no answer to our request. Maybe if we would have been English natives. In the end, we found a good author who is also a writer and we think we found the perfect English voice, even if it's not famous. So I invite you, please have a look at the trailer. What if the history of the world could be condensed into just one single day? If 4.7 billion years of existence would reflect 24 hours? We owe our fate to cosmic catastrophes. and the insurmountable force of life itself. Then it reveals that we are children of galactic luck, born in the final second of eternity. So far, Genesis has been produced as a film. It has been selected in Venice, but we won't stop at that point. Finally, we shifted to a real-time engine to have more possibilities. So for further media and for distribution. But before we will produce a sixth version of Genesis, there's one important point. During the last months, we were concentrating on another fascinating aspect, which would allow more. So one thing is to produce content for Sixtoff. But if it's possible, you would try to produce content for Sixtoff on a mobile headset, right? The mobile headset market is very much in flux with new glasses from HTC and Pico. 
And the distribution is much more interesting when you have a product, for example, for the Quest store. So this has been our latest evolutionary process during the last months. How to get complex, even photorealistic settings into mobile headsets. Our detailed and photorealistic model of ancient Rome was the benchmark. The access to this setting should happen without cables or a tethered headset. And we are close to our goal. So this is an adaption within the market for new products and new distribu distribution models, which is quite necessary for us. So simultaneously to the technological and creative speed in Earth's history after mankind popped out in the last second of Earth's history, I have the feeling that everything is speeding up now in XR. A lot looks brighter than a year ago. VR arcades thrive. There's again the void. Hologate opened a new venue. LBE is again breathing fingers crossed regarding Corona. And I was thrilled about all the wonderful new immersive experiences during the last months. The ideas and the quality are extraordinary. There are new funding options, new cooperations, for example, with museums and new distribution ops and options also emerge. And I won't forget the metaverse. This is for many people and also for us a wonderful place to insert our created settings and to use them together. So we are looking forward to be part of it. Thank you.